There was a 16 year old kid, a 16 year old black kid with asthma. The cop knew he had asthma. Let me just go straight to this video first. What do you see as a police officer uh, with his knee on the neck of a 16 year old black kid? Now this 16 year old black kid has already told him, I have asthma. The cop responded and said, I don't give up what you have and proceeded to do this thing to this kid. Uh, let me give you some background. This was almost six weeks after the uh, George Floyd murder. Um, a Baton Rouge police officer used the same tactic on an asthmatic 16 year old kid. The mother has now filed a lawsuit against the city and the police department. Um, so on July 6, 2020, Dylan Cannon was pinned to the ground as officer Alvaro Alvarez's knee uh, was pressing on Cannon's neck for close to 30 uh, seconds. Um, Cannon was a passenger in the vehicle uh, that failed to stop when an officer attempted to pull over uh, the car for a seat belt violation. About 50 minutes into the pursuit and after the driver ignored multiple traffic lights and stop signs, the vehicle came to a stop. The legal claim says the driver and passenger both exited next to the car, held their hands above their heads. The driver was arrested without incident um, by one um, set of three officers. Now this is the suit, so let me take you to what the suit says. According to the suit, filed by Tanisha Cannon, the teen's mother. Even though Cannon was kneeling and complied with commands from another set of three officers, he was held at gunpoint and forcefully handcuffed. Um, let's show a picture of that, okay? He's in complete compliance. He's in compliance, he wasn't driving the car. He's a passenger in this vehicle, he complies. He may have even been the person to tell the driver, man, you need to stop this. So he complies. The suit identifies the officers who drew their weapons on Cannon as Lorenzo Coleman, Travis Williams and Douglas Schultz. Despite the fact that Cannon, who was, who was prone on the ground, did not resist at any time. According to the suit, Officer Alvaro Alvarez placed his left knee on the back of DC's neck and he grabbed and pulled DC's left wrist behind his back. Also, according to the suit, a cannon told officers, Hey, I suffer from asthma. And the officer responded, I don't give a damn. Um, there's additional video and footage according to the suit. Um, let's show another picture. Let's show that picture of the knee in this young man's neck. Okay, you see that, right? Um, he was in compliance with every single command from the police. While the department keeps promising accountability, the history of the Baton Rouge police says otherwise. Earlier this year, the department started an investigation into the brutal arrest of a 13 year old boy. In which an officer employed the use of a chokehold. That same month, the Baton Rouge City Council approved a $4.5 million settlement with the family of Alton Sterling. A black man shot and killed by police while he was selling CDs at a convenience store. Do they think they, they are big and tough because they can manhandle children? What's wrong with these people? This to me is sociopathic behavior, psychopathic behavior. Um, to have a child in complete Compliance to your orders. I don't care what the uh, prerequisite issue was. You're a cop. You're supposed to respond when there's something like this happening, but you're also supposed to be professional. Adrian, 
I see so much wrong with how this went down. I'm glad the family is filing an actual suit. That's why we have so much information now because they were trying to keep this hush hush. What are your thoughts about it? Well, I think it's exactly kind of the behavior that we protest about, the reason we raise our voices, the reason we're demanding change. The reality is that these law enforcement officers feel that they can operate with absolute impunity. He did not give a damn if that boy had any kind of breathing issues whatsoever because he does not fear repercussions in any way because our system has insulated law enforcement with qualified immunity as well as just hurdles across the board. And so we have to know that there is still a lot more fight and a lot more fury that needs to be brought to the table because what George Floyd, the movement has brought was just an awakening. But my God, it is not the change that we need across the board because clearly law enforcement does not care. The system has as it protected them for so long that it's not going to change unless there is significant change. And that's why you need something like the George Floyd Policing and Accountability Act, because that could create the catalyst to eliminate the whole notion of qualified immunity. I guarantee you that if you eliminate qualified immunity, a police officer, a cop who says, hmm, I can put my knee on the neck of this asthmatic child, or I cannot. It's not going to change the fact that he's in compliance, right? I guarantee you, if that cop had to think about his personal assets, if he had to think about his personal liability, if he had to think about that home he owns, if he had to think about the family that's connected to him because of his actions, he would make a better decision about how he treated people. Now, will it root out everybody? Of course not, it won't root out everybody. But the the ones that it does not root out, they get sued and they get held professionally and personally liable, accountable for their activities. And it's just beyond me that individuals who are, in, who are in charge of enforcing the laws are the ones crying that they don't want the laws enforced on them. This doesn't make sense whatsoever. You're not righteous to what you took a constitutional oath or an oath of office to uphold. You're not righteous to it. So why take this oath? And if you are lie about a damn oath, where you swear to uphold certain values and virtues, you'll lie about anything. And that's why they have to crack down, Adrian, also on false police reports. False police reports are criminal. Some people have been charged with filing false police reports. But every cop will tell you that every cop they know has fudged a police report. Absolutely, if there are no consequences at all for those actions, then there's gonna be no deterrent. Like it's just, it's not possible to have the two because these individuals, we can't expect them to operate on integrity alone. That's what's gotten us here. And so we do need to have significant repercussions. We also need officers to have something on the line, just being there and having your body on the line. Yes, it's an honorable thing, but at the same time, we have to realize that the vast majority of calls do not involve violence that they face. And they are not a matter of situations where they need to ignore a boy's to tell him that he can't breathe, that's not okay. Yeah, well said. Uh, And just remember everyone, uh, infractions without enforcement is meaningless, meaningless, it means nothing.